Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Let's see, uh, in Smith's life, every twist comes with a turn. Contrast both personal and professional to find the man who wants to be poor. Did you read that article in there? I did. Oh, wait a minute. We're on. Oh. Gee, oh. Gee, gee, <laughs> I mean, folks, uh, I, had to, I had to make sure I got, I mean, I got, these, got these facts right. Anyway, Bruce Broussard here, Oregon Voters Digest. Welcome aboard. I think we're going to have quite a show here today. I, I just have, I think, I think the newspaper. We got, we got a lot of politics going on. We got the national politics. I mean, we got a whole bunch of stuff going on. But please don't get confused. Don't get overstressed by this stuff. Now you got to recognize the fact from a natural perspective, they got millions, if not billions, they're going to be spent on the presidential campaign and, and in days. other areas. And everybody's taking advantage of that situation on both sides of the rug. Right, fair, mm -hmm. right, guys. Mm -hmm. And so the bottom line is that uh, uh, in, in that business. If you got the money, you will be given the time and the opportunity to be heard, right? That's it. And regardless of the facts, you don't have to worry about being facts. You can lie. You can say anything you want to say. They will, they will advertise it for you. And if the other person complains, they will say, if you got any ad money, you can put your side of the deal. But they don't vet anything. So that's what I want to make sure you, you understand. It. They don't vet anything that's out there. It's about, this is a bonanza time, in all due respect, for the advertisers. Bottom line, okay? Yeah. So anyway, joining me to have these discussions, I don't want to get caught up in my, my going overboard in this piece, is that I've got, uh, as you know, you got you got Bob right here. Bob, how you doing? Real good, Bruce. Glad yeah. to be here. Good, good. And then I pull, I pull Bob from the games. Yeah. <laughs> and then well, I Fred, he, he's in business. He's out there showing houses all over the place. And, yeah. You know, so I, I pulled him on. With and when him. I leave here, I'm going right back to showing houses. <laughs> showing right the houses. Yeah. But anyway, I thought it was very important for it to kind of give us a, sort of an update. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to give you a sort of an update. Uh, from our perspective, because that's what it's all about. I mean, everybody's got their own views, et cetera, et cetera. And so I'm going to kind of throw some things on the table, and we're just going to have a discussion, round discussion. And if possible, Dave said we might be able to get some calls coming in. Oh, okay. So you can call. We're going to probably uh, maybe set it up with the first 30 minutes. And then the second 30 minutes, if you want to call, you can give us a call. And once he, once he puts the number on the screen, you can give us a call. But anyway... Let's maybe start off with uh, let's let's go national. Then we get then we bring it right back from a local standpoint. Oh, okay. okay, let's uh, let's talk about. It. They're getting ready for the debate. That's, the that's next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Right, Wednesday. Next what was that? Was that that third or fourth? Uh, the third, I think. The yes. third, third, of, third of October, mm -hmm. and uh, that's going to be a debate. I think it's going to be here at four o'clock. Four o'clock. Four o'clock. Seven time. back east. Yeah, right. seven east. So that's going to be a very interesting one. And uh, you know, Nancy, I'm sure you saw Meet the Press this morning. I mean, they were all talking about the debate and who's yeah. going to do what, and et cetera, et cetera. What do you think? Well, like they say, Romney's uh, been uh, practicing for this for the last five years. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how much he's learned. You know. Uh, I know there's going to be a lot of zingers that's going to come out of this. Uh, on both sides. On both sides. It's going to be, uh, you're going to have to be able to wade through all of the garbage that's going to be put out there. But isn't that the moderator's them. job? Isn't that the moderator's job to the kind of have some background enough to be able to say, wait, wait a minute, the political facts said this, this, as opposed to that? Well, that's what should happen. Okay, but, that's but not if you do that, if you and I are running and you do that, and Fred is the, uh, uh, the moderator, and he calls me on something once, and I come back at Fred talking to him while television is watching me, and I do that to Fred, and you say something that's a little off, and Fred doesn't say anything to you, it kind of takes away from the uh, spirit of the of the uh, debate. But not only that, it makes the television audience and everybody else to say, well, Fred is one-sided. So Bob was really, yeah. and, and then. I don't think know. there's going to be much of that. Yeah. I, I Let think, me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Do you think now, we got the moderator, I think she's CNN, right? Yes. She's CNN, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, she's got the questions. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sure that her boss probably said, well, they, they, had, they, probably, part, they probably had a meeting, a gathering, if you will, mm -hmm. to put the questions together, I'm thinking, okay? So now, she's got the questions or whatever. What about inside? Now, most cases, people say, uh, you know, CNN is Democrat, right? On the D side. And Fox is the uh, Republican mm -hmm. side. Right. Do you think that uh, some of those questions were shared uh, uh, to... Um, uh, Probably both sides. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. I'm do sure they do that? Do they both do that? sides have an idea what the, what the questions are going to be. 
You think I'm so? Pre I'm pretty sure both sides have an idea. Well, is even? that fair? Is that what is that what the people want to hear? Well, this is a show. Understand that this is Maybe really the president. Though. This is a show. It's a it's a show. Every time that every time someone comes on, it's a show. It's and, a show. It's not and, a serious situation. And now we're trying to get your spirit involved in this show. I mean, when you go to a movie, if it's dull. You know, oh yeah, and you him hard way, and you don't. I won't go home and talk to Fred about it. But if it was an exciting show, and I said, man, I was at the show the other day, and blah, you know. So they have so no to put on the show. No teleprompters. Well, I don't think so. They're not going to have those. No, they this, should. This debate is for Romney. Okay? Yeah. This the, is for Romney. No, when I say it's for Romney, is this? The it's clear the president's the incumbent. He's got the advantage. He's got the advantage in the polls right now. Romney's got to establish himself as why Americans should, should consider him. Mm -hmm. And that's how it always is when you have uh, a, pr a person running against the incumbent okay. in any race, let alone the presidential race. So if Romney does good tonight, then his campaign will benefit from so it. So the questions, if are, he does, the it, questions are for Romney. The right? questions are really for Romney to, to give him an opportunity to basically make his best case. Now, what Obama has to do is not mess up. He also has to remind us why we voted for him and uh, give us an indication why we should vote for him again. But make no mistake, he's walking into his ball field. This is, this is home plate for him. This mm -hmm. means home court for him. Mm -hmm. If Romney screws up tonight, he doesn't do well tonight, doesn't, over. doesn't win. sell, win. Yeah. It's, it's, it, I won't say it's you know, absolutely it's over. over, but it's, it's going to be very difficult for him to come back from this. So the deal is, so the deal is Romney gets the questions ahead of time mm -hmm. and and uh, president obama gets the cnn the d side well both of them would should get if, if one gets the questions the other one has to get the questions yeah, but the cnn is, i'm not is, coming on yeah, there i don't think it folks, matters no. a lot of folks say that well cnn is definitely democratic well so they're anti-romney we so, all uh, you what know, one of the why, things why, that happened here why didn't they have a mix of both why didn't they have both reporters uh facilitators one from fox and one from cnn well what happened here is that fox became just blatantly republican and so they had to do something to say somebody else was on the other side. So at one point, it was all other news stations other than Fox was, a, was on the Democrat side. So, you know, who... Are they part of the debate? By the way, yeah. the they are part of the debates, right? Who is that? Or, or the Fox. I'm are sure they, Fox gonna, is going to have a debate. They're going to have one. It's going to be three of them, I yeah, think. Yeah, I'm sure yeah, Fox is going to have one. But, you know, guys, I don't think it's important that they get the questions at a time. A lot of candidates, especially I would expect at this level, um, they, will pro they, they will probably look at it in some cases mm -hmm. as something that's going to be negative for them. They'd rather get it off the fly. Mm -hmm. I mean, they know what the issues are going to be that, that you're going to have to touch. And I, there's gonna be very, it's going to be very difficult to surprise either one of these men, right. especially a guy like Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to be very, very difficult. That's one of the reasons why Bush was so much better in 2004 over 2000. He's now president. He now knows a lot. Now you, how are you going to even surprise a guy like him? And I think Obama is a little smarter than him. But not, but not <laughs> only, but not only that, they've already kind of <laughs> let the cat out of the bag. That Romney's job on this one is to show that you can fluster the president. You know, he's got to try to make him get a little upset yeah, and and become well, that's a, what they were yeah. But and so, but one of the media but guys Bob, said, no. Bob, no. Obama's a black man. Yeah, he's been running against white people forever. Yeah. They always do that. Yeah. So I mean, come on. I mean, do you think that really surprises Obama? Oh, the white people are going to try to make me mad. Yeah. To get me my my tribal <laughs> to side out. To show to yeah. show that we all get angry. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> every every time you run against or you have an argument against, not every time a white person, they're going to try to get the kuta kente out of you. Well, but he meant, you know well, what I mean? mean? They're going to try to get but, get but, you but, to get but, all. But you all know. due respect, he was raised in a white world. Now. Come on. I understand, mom, but mom, but, mom was white. but hey, but look, and this is a know. one drop country. Yeah, Once a know. Negro, a little Negro is all Negro. Uh, I don't know. So. About Come on, Obama yeah. is well. Obama is well prepared. He's well prepared for uh, the for this situation right. of, uh, of 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 Romney trying to get him to to get you know okay. you know all all ignorant. Well, the thing that's going to that's, that's going to be important to me during this debate is the issues. Okay, what are the issues mm -hmm. in this mm -hmm. debate? Mm -hmm. uh, if I asked you one of the one, one, if I asked you. Name one of the issues that are going to be discussed, and I'll ask Fred too. What, what do you think one of the issues is going to be discussed? Uh, I would say uh, the economy. The economy. Mm -hmm. Specifically, what the economy? Uh, jobs, 
why why are they percent yeah the eight percent uh where uh President Obama said that he would bring jobs back to you know back to America and we're still at eight, eight over eight percent. But it's still a heated kind of situation because the last president that was elected was at eight point was it, eight point one or two was right. Was it FD? Was it Roosevelt? Or something Re FDR or? was FDR, it? FDR, yes. Oh, yeah. FDR was higher than okay. that. Yeah. So what are you, you kidding what are you, me? Well, what do you yeah. think? No, I think he, uh, where Romney's going to go is, of course, it, no, no, the, the economy. The moderate, the moderate. Uh, what, what? Or the moderate. They're going to go. They're going to hit Obama at, at two big areas: uh, the economy, but the biggest part of the economy they're going to go after is the health care issue. Okay. And then the last part they're going to hit him on is overseas. They're, he's basically going to try to say that Obama's weak, uh, that he's not strong, that because he's not out trying to murder, rape, and pillage, you know, the, <laughs> the Eastern world, that somehow he is not qualified to, to defend uh, the, con you know, the Constitution and the people. Do you but, think, Tim, this, do you think that he will be given the opportunity by the moderator, this, since it's his piece, to talk about the 47% uh, the that uh, won't, they, that, uh, they sort of just tossed aside. I'm sure they're the going to ask. They're going to ask the that question. To be able to respond to that, you think? Of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, I, here, here's my Mick, uh, my Romney on the, uh, when that question is asked to me. Share with the public. What did they? What did Forty Seven say? What, what did they say to you? Now I was misquoted. <laughs> you was misquoted. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> what do you mean? What I was talking about is not what was was broadcast to the public, mm -hmm. and it's very hard to try and get everyone to understand what I really meant. Okay. So for me to sit in here in the next minute and a half and try and explain it and oh, yeah, make it that. sound, just make it it's over. Yeah, just make you know, it, just, it was make, That's it. There was a video I watched from this guy named Jay Smooth on, uh, on YouTube where he talked about oh, comparing Obama's video. Remember that video they had of him saying that they embrace their guns and their Bibles. Yeah, right, and right, he says, right. he says, and then you've got a, a Romney's video where he's basically putting down everybody who's the not rich like him. Yeah. And he goes, he says, you know what made him, under, what was glad that both of these videos came out? He goes, even when Obama is in a place where he doesn't think anybody's watching, because he didn't know he was being videotaped, mm -hmm. he's still trying to uh, bring people together. He's still trying to go to the commonalities of everybody. Mm -hmm. Whereas Romney, when he doesn't think anybody's watching, what is he saying? You know all those rich, I mean, those poor people out there, those little people out they there? They want us to support them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> basically screw them. He goes, look at the difference between the two. But that was a $50,000 plate type of situation, yeah. and the bottom line is that, you know, he got to speak I got to my friends, folks. I got my friends. I mean, the thing that I notice is that every time I listen to an Obama speech, regardless of where he is, is coming together. Mm -hmm. I don't care if he's in Florida or he's in Correct. New York or he's out on the West Coast. But every time you listen to a, a Romney speech, it's for the group that he's with. Mm -hmm. You know, now he has an ad out, I understand, for uh, Carolina somewhere talking about Lyme disease. Hmm. You know, I mean, so whatever the flavor of the month is in your area, yeah. Romney is there to take care of it. But if him. that's his tack, I mean, that's just that he's running his campaign. You, you know and I know that you can't be all things to everybody. Yeah, that's true. Well, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe and right so in, in, a, in the American society, we all understand that everyone is not going to flourish. Mm -hmm. But you don't take 50% of us and say, hey, you the fifty percent that's out of here, and the other and the, and the other fifty percent. Well, twenty percent of you are not gonna make it, and thirty percent of you, well, twenty nine percent of you, or twenty seven percent of you are gonna be okay, and then three percent of us is just gonna flourish. It ain't gonna work. Okay, all right then. Mm -hmm. That's the national scene. Now let's bring it back down here locally from that point. And naturally, there's a mayoral race here in the state of Oregon, the largest city in the, in the state, right, Porter? Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got two contenders, I mean, viable contenders, one in, uh, in Jefferson Smith and Charlie Hale, right, former mm -hmm. commissioner. And, and, and Smith is a sitting legislator at this point in time. Right. And the point I'm raising is that uh, I noticed in the Oregonian today that they, they've, uh, they're putting a the profile. They, they're going to be profiling also Charlie next time around, I guess. But they did one on Smith, and I thought it was a very interesting profile. They didn't talk. I not, mm. and I, I'm a, I'm a was that a profile on the table? You know, <laughs> what, 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 where were the issues? You know, what I mean, where were the issues? It was just a well. Anyway, I'm throwing it on. I'm afraid to start with you. What do you think about that, that article? Well, this is the Oregonian. Oregonian the Oregonian and, I, and I, front page. The Oregonian front really let let Portland down to, uh, today on this article in that 
all they did was was basically attack him. They didn't talk about any of the issues that are, that people in Portland are concerned about. They've made uh, his driving record. A lot, you know, carry, I mean, uh, the paper who basically had a had an editor, a former editor, you know, hooking up with prostitutes. You yeah. understand what I'm talking about? Is going to come out and act like that they've got the character yeah, to judge yeah. whether or not a man is good enough for mayor. Wait a I didn't get that. You remember that guy? Was wasn't there an editor who died uh, well, cheating Bob on his Carter, wife? Bob yeah, Carter, but he cheating on his wife. I mean, think about it. If he was alive, he'd be sitting up here on the editorial board, judging Jefferson Smith. You understand? I mean, well, I would like to know what, the backgrounds exactly. of the people who are who, who who are who are judging Jefferson Smith. Now, what are their driving Scarlett, records like? Do they sitting, cheat on their spouses? I don't know if she sits on the board. I mean, on, on the board. I'm gonna check out. You know, we should well, call Larry right Flint and see if he will well, invest some money into you know, getting some you, dirt you know, on the know, editorial in, board. In all due respect, it does make a lot of sense because the bottom line, you ask yourself the question: Who are these folks? That are just because you, even when you when you read the the editorial page, there's no signature of who wrote the article. Hmm. It's coming from someone on that board. See what I'm saying? There, there's no. Well, that's that's what I'm trying to say. Is I mean, how, for all we know, these guys are espousing that these that the, that these politicians mm -hmm. should be be at a level of character that they themselves aren't. You know, I think after this election, from now on, we need a full disclosure for people on the editorial board. We need to know their driving records. We need to know if they're if they if they're cheating. How can you tell me something? Matter of fact, you're doing if I ever if hey, I ever run for David, office, David. I'm going to go to the editorial board with my own set of questions for the well, editor. Well, here's a, the, the the editorial and commentary editor. I guess he replaces Bob uh, Codwell. Mm -hmm. Is Eric Lukens, L-U-K-E-N-S. Maybe we can invite him to come over. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And but, where, where's no, the photo? But, but I got my, something my, different out of this. What's that? Okay. Yeah, let's talk about that. I got something totally uh, different than what Fred got out of here as far as them uh, bashing uh, uh, Jefferson. What it did for me was to show a man with, with that, that is uh, dedicated to doing what he says he's going to do. Correct. Mm -hmm. You know, now this might backfire on them if this was supposed to yeah, be a negative project. piece. Yeah, the bus project. I mean, I was there doing the bus project, working with yeah, the Democratic know. Party. So I know there was a lot of African American young people that went through that program, that that process, and some of them are heading organizations in this in this uh, community today. Correct. Uh, you know, uh, uh, or, so, Oregon is not so, going to write about that because, so, you know, yeah, black wait, people, wait, you know, but they, stuff. yes, they did. Yes, but, they did. But, yeah. but on pay on, you go to page t eight or 10, I think page 10, 10 yeah, of this right, right. and you'll see where they tried to say something bad about the bus project and the fact that black people weren't treated right. well, well they and all of that. But they mentioned Joanne Bowman. Well, What's that all about? I mean, they said Joanne Bowman and Campbell. That was another guy that was no Clayton K Clayton, Claiborne. Clayton Campbell. Reverend Claiborne. He's Claiborne. a Marine, by the way. Oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah. But, but, but Claiborne said good things about him. Oh, right. No, but that's not what that's not what was said in the article. No, Claiborne said good things. He basically counteracted what <laughs> what what what, what uh, uh, Joanne? Joanne Bowman. Okay. You know, okay. but Joanne Bowman, who is such an authority on how you should treat and be fair to black people, next time I see Joanne, I'm gonna say Joanne. When we were, uh, were were running all over Derek Foxworth Rice, where were you? Mm. You know, the only black people she ever stands up for are murderers, rapists, and pimps. <laughs> if you haven't murdered, raped, pimped, you can't get any love for Joanne uh, Bowman. Is there a disclaimer it's on there? It's hard to see. <laughs> oh, it's hard to see. Hard to see. Yeah. yeah. Now, I mean, if Jefferson went out and did some pimping, she would like the if he then found the Lord, she would like the man. Not with the last name Smith. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> you, come you gotta be more yeah, specific. Where, where, where what that are you talking from? about, Bob? Well, there's some, there's some hard feelings between the Smiths and uh, and, jo and Joanne from, from things that happened in the past, and they would have to come on the show and talk about them. Not well, me. Well, why didn't she but, do a full disclosure? But, well, then she wasn't. Because maybe her character is yeah, not yeah, as yeah. high. I'm not, I'm not talking yeah. character here. I'm just saying mm -hmm. but, but Fred, they asked her her opinion yeah, on Fred, something. Fred made her point. She couldn't have done anything but do what she did. She basically yeah. said she didn't like it. Yeah. She should have said, look. And she said, I don't like it. Yeah, she, she should have said, I don't like it. Front, she should have said that up front. I'm sorry. She should have re recused herself. That's yeah, she should have recused herself. You know what I'm saying? But you know what? She's not going to recuse herself. Because you know why? Jefferson Smith associates with too many black people who have not raped, murdered, or pimped anybody, well, and she's offended. Well, let me let me let me say this. That's pretty heavy. Deal, I'm gonna say, bro. you know, up, being bro? being active in the Democratic Party yes, yes. Mm -hmm. with the Smiths and Joanne, and Joanne. Yes. You know, I'm not gonna talk bad about either. I'm not talking side. bad about any of them. I'm just saying that 
I think uh, when Joanne was in 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 the state uh, work, exactly. working in the legislature, she did some positive things for people and for working people. Right. Okay. And people turned their back on her when she ran for county commissioner in in the city in the county of Multnomah County. Uh, I think you know uh, for the Smiths. It's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to to have a son that feels privileged, that went to Harvard, that had had an opportunity to serve in different law firms, did all these, but come, but finally reaches. Robert, let me finish. Let me finish. You're not making it look bad. Let me better. finish. Let me finish. That that finally reaches a sense of well-being, i.e., I'm going to do something positive, and when he gets back home and he leaves his job with this law firm and he begins the bus project and all of these other things and he begins a positive trail. Uh, yes, you know, he was smart enough to say, Robert. I'm not, I've lost my driver's license. I have to get to Eugene. I'm having someone drive me. He gets in a major accident where he could have been killed be be and he still goes to Eugene. He didn't turn around and come back home. He went and fulfilled that commitment. You know, that made me say, you know what? I got a little, little more uh, feeling and, and pride in the young man. Robert, I agree with everything you said about Jefferson Smith, but I got to hit you on this one because I'm tired of politics doing this. This is one of the reasons why we're in the position we're in in Portland right now. Join Bowman should have recused herself. Okay? And it's just because if she Wait, hold, that, hold, that came from me. Hold on, hold on. That no, came from me. No, 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 but, no, but you're right about this history. Wrong. No, 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 you're not. Yeah, but another, but, 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 but I'll, tell, I'll, I'll tell you another point about this. Yeah, you, you if she seen. holds against him that his family and friends support him, do you really want your kid, who's going out into the world right now to make his bones, do you want somebody to hold against him how his family and friends support him and have given him advantages that you and I didn't have growing up? Um, no, 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 Robert, Robert, you know, that is you not a reason in politics, anything. that is not a reason in oh, politics oh. for anybody okay. to hold it against anybody right, else. Right. And if a black person does that, that is a flat out offense. Well, the, the, they know better. The, the reporter should have known better, too. The reporter should have known. Beth's been Beth, around Beth, long Beth enough. Beth's been around. She, she should have known. The, because I'm, I think about, when I think about the, the Smith with reference to Joanne, I remember the county commissioner's mm -hmm. spot. Remember that one? Mm -hmm. And uh, got, who got the job was Joe. His dad got the job. Mm -hmm. Joe Smith got the job as a temporary pit. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And she almost cried, and she cried there, and in, 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 there in, in, with the commissioners. In fact, I even I even supported her. Mm -hmm. I went and testified in her behalf because she had the background, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. She was in the legislature. It was just, it was just a good deal. However, but my point is that that was another relationship there. But still, I think in this particular case, she, she should have accused herself. Yeah. You know what? The first time uh, Barack Obama ran for office, he got his butt kicked. You understand? Oh, yeah. Sometimes you get your butt kicked. I've, I, I've run twice. I got my butt well, kicked I've, each time. I, I've run. Uh, I, may, I may run I again. Run. I may get my butt kicked again. You're not going to see me walking away. If I go out and my city well, we re rejects me, Never. you're not going to see me go out and throw sour grapes on other people just because, well, you know, your, your dad supports you well, more than my dad did. Okay, Gee whiz. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Well, I, I get the old dong then on Bev for doing what she did. Bev, Bev, dong, Bev slowly. I'm out number two to one. Bev, Bev, Bev slowly. Bev, 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 she Bev, needs Bev, more black friends. They, they did not do a good she job. She needs to hang out with black people more. Okay. Bev Slovic, so she doesn't go do the, doing the Rolodex stuff. Oh. <laughs> she then, needs to be able hand, to reach out guess, to black people I guess concern, who can give her real information about how black people feel about okay. issues. But, but no due respect, the Argonian should have done a better job, if you will. Yeah. If they're going to do a profile, I mean, the election's just right around the board aspect of it. It's going to be interesting to see what they do on uh, former commissioner uh, Charles, well, Charlie Hill. Charlie Hill. Now, I hope you know what well, I hope. They, I hope. What do you think? I hope they don't. Are, you, are they going to just bash him in? The I hope they don't do that. I mean, they did that to and Jeff. Stuff and residency and stuff. They I, tried that already. I hope they no, don't no, do no, that. They, no, I, I hope they talk profile. about issues. They're doing the same thing. Going to have to do. And I hope they write another uh, article about Jeff talking about his issues. They don't. They don't. Oregonians should stop. This is one of the pe reasons why people stop reading the Oregonian. It's stuff like this. It's, it's despicable, you know. And you know, it just well, it's the times. It's the time, ladies and gentlemen. It's the times, and the times right there, said. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that in these times, tabloids is what everyone is doing. If you don't think so, go to your local grocery store. And I used to be a grocery store manager, and I can tell you that the tabloids were in a corner, in a book 
aisle down the road. You take them out of and so all of a sudden, all of a sudden you find the tabloids at the checkout counter with the top row so that everybody in eye sight, so everybody can see them. And that's the same thing that's going on in today's society. They would have had more Everything people, is tabloid. It's not about they, they would have had more people writing this paper if they had done a series on just uh, defining the differences on issues of these two men. A uh, hardcore yeah. speaking to yeah. as many yeah. Portlanders as possible. Yeah. Yeah. They would have more people reading, yeah. but that's not what these guys want to do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the part that really gets me is when they talk about his uh, stay in, in, the, in the house and the fact that uh, they basically say he's done nothing. You know, uh, just because your name is not on the bill you do have a vote. Well, you know, and I might add, too, mm. that you, you're right about in terms of responding, because they're sort of at another level, if you yeah. will. No one knows but them. Yeah. Right. I, I did try to get in <laughs> touch with the uh, the vice president, the editor and vice president, Peter Bata, I think no. it's B-H-A-T-I-A. He's whatever. not going to deal but with But he, he wouldn't even respond to no, the call. No, he's not going to. Of course I mean, not. The same guy that, I, the same guy that got, got, in, got in the Oregonian, and I approached him. In fact, I was at the observatory. Bruce, time. they've got they got they quoted two black people in here. They don't need to talk to anymore. Oh, is that yeah. right? That's why they're not going to respond I'm an to you. American. They, they got why, 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 why that's the Oregonian. Hey, yeah. they no. buy their ink by the by the five gallon yeah, drum. Yeah, they don't you need to talk to you. Pen. Oh, by the they pen. don't have. Hey, I put them, <laughs> I put on my Facebook that as of today, as of today, that's why I buy the paper. As of today, I buy the paper. Jefferson Smith, I've got the copy. There it is. Jefferson Smith is an honorary Negro now. Honorary Negro because. They just gave him the Negro treatment. He's, they would have done the exact same thing had one of the three of us had run and been able to get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people to support us like happened to Jeff. They would do the exact same thing oh, yeah, to him. Done, he done, knows done. what it's like still. to be a Negro and I'm, running I'm, for office. I'm very familiar with the editorial. Mm. Exactly. Page. I'm very familiar with the, on the political deal. Well, <laughs> well, one day, we we got to talk about that piece, too, at one point in time. Yeah. Well, guys, it looks really good. This is good. Well, then in the same paper, in uh -oh. the same paper aspect, we got another situation here. And there, there was another. There was another interesting fight. Freshner's reinstatement. The city of Portland. Fresh hours. Fresh hours. Is it fresh hour? Yeah. yeah. Fresh hour reinstatement. Sorry about pronouncing your name. The city of Portland, out on a legal limb, should pursue every option in a quest to take control of its own police bureau. Now that's an interesting piece. I mean, we, the who's in control made, of the police the point, bureau? The point of it is that the police are running the shop. Yeah. Hey. The police commissioner. The police commissioner and chief of police don't run the shop at all. So why do we need them? Oh, I disagree with that. Look what they did to Derek Foxworth. Well, no, but I'm just I mean, figure. over having sex, consensual sex with a white woman, they demoted his behind. No, right? they run the shop down there. They do. Who runs the shop? The the, the mayor and the city council. But the, but the chief fire, who fired him? The bottom line, it, it's under the mayor. The mayor if you don't fired. like something with the, or the Portland police, the buck stops with whoever is sitting as mayor. So my question is, if you're not ballsy becomes... enough, if you, with the power that the charter gives the mayor over the police department, if we have a mayor that's not ballsy enough to resolve any issue there, that re is a reflection on, in, on that leader. I mean, he couldn't fire him. But he said he, he shouldn't him. have fired him. He, he shouldn't have fired him. Well, well. He shouldn't have fired him. He was following his, his training. His, his superiors let us down. His, his sergeants and the lieutenant on duty is the one that set all this up. That's how come this went down. And you know who should have been fired? Mm. They got metal on their shoulders. Oh my God. They, instead, they fire the lowest guy, on the, they fire the private, okay. when it's the general that screwed up. On that note, we're gonna take a short break, and hey, please get back to us, get to the TV, get your popcorn out, and we, we're, gonna, we're gonna have a good one. We'll be right back, take a short break. We all fired up. Oh, we're fired up. <laughs> That's what you said, I mean, this, this, is, this is freebie nowadays. <laughs> You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
Oh, yeah, yeah. He died. Wow. Yeah, he died. He did the what thing? He was. He was. He Back here, boys. This thing's got so much of it. We just we went right into the right into the uh, the break time aspect uh -huh. of it. So anyway, so Bob, what, what's your feel about this piece? Well, any any thoughts? You know, fresh out, get, right? Fresh yeah, out. Uh, fresh out. Reinstatement. The, the editorial well, board has endorsed the the mayor as for spending number whatever one, money. Number one, I believe I believe that there's a due process, and sometimes due process does not come out the way managers or workers want it to be. And so, but, but believing in it, you have to follow what the directives are. And they've sent the man through all, the, all of the legal uh, terms in order to keep him out or get him back. And everybody's saying put him back to work. Mm -hmm. So now, as my, but as the boss, I can put you back to work. But my question is, do you put him back on the street? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So, but maybe he should be a, because in all due respect, the arbitrator is something that uh, was signed off by the mayor in right. the city. Correct. We're in a contract. Right. And you got a labor relations board, right. i.e., same thing that was signed off by the city. So, in all due respect, where do you find this money? I, we, we, aren't we supposed to be in a desperate street? We're supposed we to be, spending? but we spend a lot of money on the on the Look, case there. Well, what's the deal here? The man's out of here in three months. He don't care. He's still trying to atone for what he did to Derek Foxworth. Give me a break. This man does not fool me one bit. Who are you he, talking about now? Sam Adams. Adams. He doesn't Adams. fool me one bit. He does not care about the life of your average black person. I mean, there may be one or two, maybe four or five tokens in his life. But for the most part, every time black people have needed this man, he has let us down. And all you have to do is go back to Derek Foxworth. This man could have stood up and said, hey, you know what, Mayor uh, Tom Potter, I know you've got the right to demote him. But you know what? Him having sex with white women on his own time and his private life is his business. He shouldn't lose his job over it. But you know what? He didn't stand up for that. This gay man has been spent fighting for his rights as a gay person to have a private life and, and a professional life separate for years. But when it came that time for a black man to have his private life separated from his, his personal life, who let us down? I don't care what he does down there with this fresh hour thing. He ain't fooling me. He does not care about black people. He doesn't care about the city of Portland. And this is a complete slap in the face of the people of Portland right well, now. Well, now, wait a minute. Now, the ministerial alliance are part of this piece, too. I mean, uh huh. You got, you got Joanne Bowman. Yeah, she's part of the Oh, yeah. Bowman, and let me ask you this the has, the, has the AMA, these preachers, have they gone into the fresh hour family and make sure they're okay? Watching their family member being drugged through the mud, mm. right? Has, has, has these men of God made sure that they understand that this is against their daddy or their brother, not against their family? Have they, have they gone to see publicly if these people are, are doing okay? Well, does, God, does God love Fresh Hour and Fresh Hour's family? Or do they only well, love that, that, the people the AMA that, tells that, that, them to love? Another point that should be made is that there, there was nothing in this particular order that said that, in fact, the, uh, the president of the union was an African-American, too, was black. What am I talking about? What's his name? Well, yeah, I remember that some articles you don't want a black name? person in the article what's, what's at all, and this is one what's, of them. What's the guy? Uh, uh, Daryl Turner. Daryl Turner. No, no, no. Yeah, you don't Darryl want to Turner quote him. He's the president of the union, and he's basically. But didn't, taking, didn't he come on after this? No, after but, he, all this but, he made, but he made the position that. But he made the position that you made from the standpoint he went through the process, right? And, and that was it. Mm -hmm. And so. Daryl Trump, who happens to be an African American, I mean, I'm sure he might have gotten together with the uh, Ministerial Alliance and maybe even uh, uh, Joanne, don't you think? Mm. I doubt it. Mm. They don't like black people like him. Wait a minute. No, I mean, nah. but, I mean that, wasn't that they may action? surprise wasn't me. Wasn't that all about the fact of getting folks in positions that. Uh, well, no. you know, one of the things that ha happens Bob, around here. Bob, I'm, trying, I'm trying to be. I'm no, trying no, not to. Don't you dare. Don't you dare say that. <laughs> Don't, you don't worry, that. I'm don't egging you. you. I'm egging you. No, don't give it. You I mean, Daryl Turner trouble, is head okay. of don't the Portland trouble, Police Bob. Union. Don't get in trouble. Daryl Turner is head of the Portland Police Union. That's right. And this past February, the black uh, leadership in this town didn't even make even note of how historical that is. You know what? No, these, these guys they don't want to deal didn't with know. oh BS no, 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 no. BS. They, 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 they knew, they knew, and you know what? They, really but they sad. don't like black guys it's like really him. Sad. It's really a You know, he's yeah, not yeah, racist. Yeah, yeah, but here I am. He I hasn't mean, raped or murdered are, anybody. Digest, you, we've invited him, and the yeah. guys. He doesn't pimp. He, he's scared to come on here. You know, he's scared. He think there's an well, association. Well, you know, we 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 do a very open kind of a right. monologue kind of a deal. Well, I have I have a number of friends that are police officers. I have friends that that work in hiring. Mm -hmm. of police officers and I've asked I've asked uh, one of them to come on 
And he won't do it. He's going to, you know, because it's a delicate situation for them to come. And if we say something to them that that kind of stands out in the public's eye, you know, it puts a it puts a heart. It well, makes hey, their job just I a little bit hard. I will say this about, about Daryl. I mean, right up front with you. Yeah. The guy is not afraid of nothing. He's yeah. not. You ask him a question, he'll tell you. Oh, yeah. Because unfortunately, I mean, I do but, have some And have you I asked him why he, he supports Fresh about, Hour? Yeah, I do have you, little, no, I know you that, talked to all these other police officers. What you talking about? I was asking, did he go to Daryl Turner and say, Mr. Turner, head of the police union, the man who's defending a white man who shot another who's, black who's going, man. Who's, who's going Have on? you asked Daryl Turner why is he standing behind? Well, I know Fresh what, Hour. There's two reasons that I, you know, for me, uh -huh. that that he's the head of the union. Right. That's number one, mm -hmm. and it's his duty, regardless of the race, creed, or color of that person. So you think so his all the other things? No, but you think his matter. character is such. He's doing if he his thought job, Fresh Hour right. was a bad cop. Or had some inkling to kill not, black people or one something. One more time. That no, he no, would. No, it has nothing no, no. to do with the rules, this. The mm -hmm. rules and the it's, process is on the books. That's it. It's, and he went through the process, and that's what he's defending. That's right. He's, he's that's defending, defending the process. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. It, no, and the reason why he keeps getting told, we keep, the city of Portland keeps getting told to put him on back on duty is because the man did his job. I ain't saying that the protocols were right. I ain't yeah. saying the orders were right. Yeah. But I'm saying, you know what? There was a sergeant, there was a lieutenant. There's an assistant chief and there's a police uh, police uh, commissioner. Oh, who was that? They screwed up. They screwed up. The training was wrong. Okay. How the training was applied was wrong. And that's what the reports have said. So which uh, person are we going to put this on? Are we going to blame the mayor? Are we going to blame the chief at the time? Are we going to blame the, uh, the lieutenant that was there? Or what about the sergeant? I mean, you were in the military. Well, you remember back in the military? Mm -hmm. You know what this is like? Well, they, they are basically yeah. going after the private for the screw-up that the general made. Well, that's the same thing they did uh, on what was the prison uh, for the Iraq in, uh, in Iran. I mean, Iraq. I, Iraq, when the young lady and uh, the other two guys were doing things to the prisoners, they were told, they were told to do these things. It all came out mm -hmm. somewhat that they were told to do these things, but they're the ones that serve time. But then I think the opening, so, getting back to this other piece, though, the other thing is that I think one of the, one of the, uh, one of the officers, i.e. King, who was a former president of the union, mm -hmm. kind of opened up the door a bit mm -hmm. because he said he agreed, if you will, with the firing aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Fair? Hey, you see what I'm saying? He, my point. But he's not. He, but he is not. He wasn't. He's not the president now. And I'm I sure disagree. That, and I'm sure that had he been sitting in that same spot, I think he would have followed the same law. I will tell you this: if if I am not there, but had I been mayor of Portland and this went down with what I know now, there'd be at least three people right now that be they'd be doing law enforcement in some other state. They, 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 there's no way in hell as mayor of this town I would allow them to be uh, doing the law training, enforcement. The training no, no, I'm talking about the people who made the decisions on what to do. I ain't going to get into everything. I urge everybody to, to start reading some of these reports. But what happened could have been avoided had there been proper leadership uh, uh, delivered. And we did not get that leadership delivered that day. Okay. And, the, and, and the, to me, for the mayor to lead the city down this path right now, it is a, a, a straight-up slap in the face. Okay, okay. So what do you say to the ministerial alliance? Read the Any facts. Points. Grow up. Stop, stop, stop going the, about the way of making change the way you are. Put some more God in our lives. Yeah. Not, this is not us against the world or uh, us against the police department. You know, it really hurts me how they've gone about this and I've never once seen them try to bring us together with the police. And it could have started with just reaching out to Fresh Hour's family. Fresh Hour is a cop. I ain't saying he's the best cop in the world. I ain't saying he's the worst cop in the world. But he's a human being. Yeah. And all of his friends and family are thinking, you know, what's going on with this guy? Yeah. Because he's got a bunch of very uh, influential black people holding press conferences every six months and trying to say that he's a great Satan, that there was a mistake made. The man that, that killed that should not have happen. died. But you know what? This is not an us against them situation. This is, this is you know what this is? This is how are we going to make sure this doesn't happen again. And I do not feel the direction the AMA is going. They're, they're getting us to where we need to go. Okay. They're in the way. Can I say something real right quick? quick? Yeah, real quick. Then we'll get us in there. We've gone through the, the uh, possum incident, the choke them incident, the smoke them don't choke them incident. Uh -huh. uh, three people... The three young people losing their life in a row uh, before this. A young lady trying to get away in the car and she gets shot. Mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know, all of these things. At some point, 
Go back I can understand how people are saying it's time to start firing some people down at the police uh, department. And, but Bob, let's get real. So, Those old cops, they've retired. The cops that are in right now, most of the cops right now, if you go right now to roll call, which is probably happening right now over at Killingsworth, mm -hmm. You'll find most of those cops that are in that room right there weren't even born when that possum incident happened. Well, I mean, and you I'm know just what? Bring... Some of them were in diapers when you're talking about that one incident where the where the woman was uh, was killed for dragging a cop in a car. Mm. And you know, so, come on, you're, you're, you're talking different. about a different okay. round of people. You're no, talking I'm about not. people. I'm talking about the culture. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay, okay well, I ain't wait, saying wait, wait, the wait, culture wait. doesn't hold need on, some help, on, but on. what you're going to okay. do, you're going to take on, a cop on, who Fred, hasn't offended Fred, you yet Fred, and, and hold Fred, them accountable Fred, for something Fred, they haven't done, Fred, they weren't part of? It's the culture. Okay, let's stop here. Okay, here's, 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 okay, we can probably go on yeah. a little bit more on this piece aspect of it. But the fact of it is somebody has to take some sense of control. That's right. Now they're, they're That's the mayor. Arbitration is going to be up for a contract renewal. So at some point in time, somebody needs to be sitting at the table trying to figure out, okay, fine, uh, taking about the issues and whatever, right. redot those eyes if that's the case. That's the case. And move on and go through the same thing with the Labor Relations Board, go to the governor and talk about it because understand this is a state issue straight around right. a state and aspect of it. So someone needs to take on responsibility. So well, you've got the governor and the mayor, right? Yep. Right. Yeah, I agree and with as that. Far, I agree. As far as that, the mayor is wrong. I'll agree with him on that because he shouldn't be throwing fuel on the fire when they've gone through the process Correct. and the person has been put back okay, to work. Good. Plain and simple. All right. Now, another piece that's on the table that, that's kind of like coming up is the old issue about the new bond issue for the, uh, mm. for the schools. Right? That's going to interest the city of Portland. That's interesting, you know, mm -hmm. because I'm, in fact, the other thing is that I'm still looking for, then the first bond issue, Jefferson High School was part of that piece. Mm -hmm. They're not in there now. No. What's the deal? Because they. They're going to get rid of Jefferson. Everybody out is there, community understand college gonna pick that up? Is community college going to pick that up? Jefferson will soon become PCC. PCC. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's, it might be, it might not be in my lifetime or your lifetime. Yeah, well, you're going to live a long I'm, time. I hope to. It's going to happen soon, gonna, though. But you, you, it's going to happen. You are getting old. And so get, you, you get ready for it. It'll happen before now, you become hey, my grandfather again. I'm a young again. man. I died my hair great. <laughs> yeah, it'll happen soon. It'll happen soon. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, going to happen. You'll be all right. So, so, but the bottom line, though, they should tell the public, though. They well, tell the public why am I going to? They shouldn't do the bond measure because this bond measure is only slightly better than the last one. If they, If this bond measure passes, you're going to lose approximately 40 to 50 percent of the black population in, 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 the, in the school district. Mm -hmm. And so, so basically, if you're voting for this and you're against gentrification, right. you're, you're fooling yourself. Yeah. You just made our community, our schools, a lot wider. Right. And that's if you, wanna, if, if you trust <laughs> well, the number big... from, the, from the Census Bureau about the average income of black, of black people in the black area. black people moving to Park Rose now? Well, no, this is what I'm saying. You know, so, they're so, being so, forced. Making, they're yeah. being forced so, because <laughs> we're making things so expensive. We, if you, it's a poverty issue that, okay, affects, no. that affects the black people yes, more. So, you know, this, and then on top of that, what, how wise is it for us to spend $100 million to earthquake-proof a 100-year-old school building you know, when we could, for $22 million, tear it down and build a brand new one. Right. You know, I would rather us spend $100 million building five new school buildings and spend $400 million, make it education better. I mean, they're basically Roosevelt, building these schools Cleveland, for, the rich, uh, for the rich white people who are going to live in Portland in the future. Because they sure as heck aren't expecting a lot of black kids to be in these schools when the smoke is over with from all this construction. Well, you know what this all tells me? is that over the next 10 to 12 years, the city of Portland is going to begin to grow and jobs are going to come back into that metropolitan area. And when those jobs come back, do you want the closest and, and, and the easiest through fare to your jobs to be controlled by a black population? Or do you want to, uh, as you say, regenify, regenify this, this uh, and get, get people out of here, move them to the side, beautify the area so people that's coming through, going into downtown, people that's coming in to visit mm. can, can, can come across the river as they build a new park on the east side, as they put in light rail on this. Everything yeah. that's done is done with a purpose in this city. And we are the last ones to find out well, why. Well, no, I, I think it's more of they're just oh. indifferent. You know, a friend of mine told me once, he's a white guy from overseas. He doesn't live here anymore. But he told me something. We had a, over beers. We were talking. He said, Fred, you know what the white, black people don't understand in Portland 
is that white people just don't think about you unless you're in the room. That's right. They just don't think. It's not that they hate you. It's not that they want to, you know, <laughs> That's right. get rid of you. You just don't come up. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of oops. <laughs> well, this is one of them. We had a bunch of people who mean well. They want to make schools better. Right. right? And they're doing something that they think is great. Right, right. They probably didn't think about it until I started screaming at them. Hey, what about the black folks? Yes. You're kicking out black people. Uh -huh. a, cu a couple of these people that are, that, are, that are champion of this, I've heard them talk eloquently about how gentrification is horrible and how it's damaged the black right, population right, right, right. And, and uprooted. I know that when they think about black people, there is a passion in there of, of trying to do the right thing. Yeah. When they're doing this, yeah. this bond measure, they weren't thinking about black people. And now it's too late. <laughs> And the thing is, they don't understand. It is just as racist to not right your wrong yep. than to make the wrong in the first place and point. call it good. You make good points. Years in, mm -hmm. I mean, if to me, I keep pushing them, hey, I understand you weren't trying to kick me out of the neighborhood, but you are. Yes. So yeah, yes. can you help me stay? Yes. Can you just say, we're going to do something different, Fred? Vote okay. it. We're going to vote against this, and we're going to do something different. Okay, on that note, let's get, let's get another piece in. Bob, you brought up an interest. You said you saw something on the on the net, the internet. Where is that piece at? Yeah. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Well, this, this is interesting here, Brent. Oh, yeah. What is the EB-5 program? The immigrant, I'll just read real quick. Yeah. The immigrant investor program, also known as EB-5, was created by Congress in 1990 to stimulate the U.S. economy through job creation and capital investment by immigrant investors by creating a new commercial enterprise or investing in a troubled business. There are 10,000 EB-5 immigrant visas available annually. In 1992 and regularly author reauthorized, regularly reauthorized since then, 3,000 EB-5 visas are also set aside for investors in, in regional centers designated by USCIS based on proposal for promoting economic growth. There are two distinct EB-5 pathways for an immigrant investor to gain lawful permanent resident for themselves and their immediate family. The basic program and the region, regional center pilot program. Both programs require that the immigrant make a capital investment of either five hundred thousand or one million dollars, depending on whether the investment is in a targeted employment area (TEA) or not, in a new commercial enterprise located within the United States. TEA is defined by law as rural area of an area that has experienced high unemployment of at least 150% of the national average. Boy, PDC, I can see it all over the place. Mm -hmm. The new commercial enterprise must create or preserve 10 full-time jobs for qualifying U.S. workers within <laughs> two years or under certain circumstances within a reasonable time after the two-year period. <laughs> of the immigrant investors admission to the United States as a conditional permanent resident, CPR, I want to invest $500,000 in an area, but there is no regional center there. How long does it take for a regional center to be established in the mid-America? What are the requirements for me and my company to meet to get my permanent status? Mm -hmm. you got to be kidding me. No. And all that money that we're sending out on these overseas and all that money, and they're taking that money and coming back. And it's, it's, it's kind of what's a... What's going on? It's kind of a Ponzi scheme, if you ask me. Is, you know, this, real? Is this real? That's real. That's real. Just go to EB5 and put that in your Google and it'll bring it all up and it'll tell you about what's going on in California and Illinois and there, and it's about to happen here in Portland. In Portland? Yes. Give us a little Portland background. Well, that? Uh, they're looking at building two hotels. Uh, the new ones? Uh, the, the new they, ones. Just proposed? Yeah. So who, and what's so that team out there? Uh, who's, who's putting that piece together? Is it, it's Williams. I'm trying to remember the name Homer, of uh, uh, Baker Park. Homer or something? Homer Williams and, uh, and uh, as a construction company. We'll have more on this uh, next week. Yes, I just wanted to, to right. bring it. But this you know, is a new so hotel that they're being they're get, It's two, two new hotels that they're looking at building, and they're doing it with uh, funds from outside of the United States, which would give some people some legal residency in the United States. So good. if you live outside the United States, you have $500,000 that you can afford to bucks. invest right, right, right. or a million bucks, you know, Invested in some, in, a, in a project here, have ten people hired, and bingo, you become a citizen. Wow! So money that's been given that we give out, you know, from the State Department or whatever to these other countries and whatever, now all their families can come in here for five hundred thousand dollars. Right. So if it, if and uh, still own the building, uh, they well, 
they they invest in the building. They the gonna visa. get a they gonna get a they gonna get a residual on their money and a visa. Not going through the regular route. No, right. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. That's that's an interesting. Fred, yeah. you, you got real so for five hundred thousand dollars, you can buy citizenship. Is basically wow. is wow. what it's saying. What? Well, okay, guys. <laughs> that's that's a good one. That's something. Look at. Why don't you follow up on that? Will you, Bob? Yeah. Okay, Fred. Give us a little update on the on the real estate deal. I mean, uh, are we improving in the area? Are, are people are buying homes? Uh, people are trying to buy homes. Things have gotten a, 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 a lot better. Are the banks doing everywhere the throughout the market? Of course, it's better the closer you are to downtown Portland, um, the better. Um, but I mean, throughout the market, we're seeing some life, especially this time of the year. This is a fall, and I'm amazed at how many people are showing up at open houses and are out looking. Um, I'm going to be showing houses later today. I'm going to be showing houses all day tomorrow, and here it is going into October. Wow. And the market is still, it feels like August to me. Really? You know, the, the market is still, you know, still there's still people out there looking. And what stuff. about the banks? Are there, is there money there mm -hmm. to be loaned? There's lots of money there. The only problem is, is how to get into the street. We've gotten a lot of new restrictions. What do you mean? We've got a lot of new restrictions that get in the way of, um, of, of people being able to qualify sometimes. Um, Oregon has got the, the and I, I feel it's affecting um, not just rates, because rates seem to be a little, a uh, little lower. Not much. We're talking a quarter to an eighth lower, like in Washington and stuff like that. The risk factors in Oregon: a loan officer and the lender are personally taking a, a responsibility, responsibility if when they give you a loan. Oh, so, uh, their jobs on the line. That's what. No, no, no. no their no. financial their, future. Their life is their on the line. Their financial future. <laughs> Unless you work for out. a bank. <laughs> so if you work for U.S. Bank or Wells Fargo, you're a loan. You don't have to worry. Uh, but let's say you're a, a mortgage broker or uh, or, or some like other I lender, was. like he was. Um, if you get like if he <laughs> gave a loan to you right. for ten years right. afterwards, right. now the, uh, the he, he's 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 liable I'm tied to that loan. if if it defaults. And um, and, and here's default. Default means that eight years from now, you lose your job. Right. And they go yeah. in and find out that y your your racials were off by oh, yeah. one tenth of one percent. Yeah. And we did something to help you get in because one tenth of one percent didn't mean that much. Correct. You know, but and then uh, eight years later, you lose your job. You can sue me and everybody else attached to that loan. Uh, and, and since we're now in judicial foreclosure land because of the other things that we did in the last session, Jesus. you understand? I mean, uh, I saw a, uh, a, a, a so lawsuit. There's no benefit even getting in the, in the, I, in the business. I, I, I That's saw, why I got out. I, I, saw, I saw a lawsuit from Chase Jesus. the other, uh, about a week or so ago oh where God. Chase is doing a judicial foreclosure. It's a, com it's a complaint, basically. Mm. And they've got 22 <laughs> things that the homeowner has got to respond to, wow. to in order and basically if they, 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 it's chase saying that these people are dirt bags give us the property back wow. i mean so it, how far back does, does that go back, back 10 years 10, 10 years it goes back 10 years so any, before anybody, 10 years anybody that has moved in within the last 10 years if all of a sudden they're having problems with their home they, and they, they can sue their, their loan officer they can sue that loan did you get that folks right yeah in fact let me check my paperwork out on mine uh -huh. <laughs> I'm trying to, it's, it's re a I'm great way. It's a, it's a great way to stall out a foreclosure. Right. Wow. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's a great. Really? Way. How, how can they do that? I'm not an attorney, but I was. I, I tell people this: when people tell me they're in foreclosure problems, I tell them, uh, even though you probably can't afford it, because if you can't afford to make your house payment, how are you <laughs> going to afford an attorney? Yeah. But you need an attorney. Yeah. And uh, well, we, the state has got some some foreclosure. Thing nah, that was this mediator. That's different. And so. Hey, I, every yeah. every bone, hey, every every stone. Some turning. attorney, <laughs> some attorney is going to uh, put together a class action one day that's going to just be just unbelievable and include everybody. Oh my and God! They're, they're going to probably even look at your records too. Well, they they regardless. can't because I didn't do very many loans, so I'm okay, I think. Yeah, he didn't do very many. <laughs> But I'm just saying, you said 10 years. I mean, that's, but that's you know what? Hefty. When they do, when this does happen <laughs> and the Oregonian writes an article about it, yeah. you know they're going to find him because they got to find the black guy. <laughs> so they, they, and they're going to do a background check oh, and see God. what his, his driving record was like. Yeah. We want to know if he had the character enough to handle the, the filling out a 1003 and oh having the personal information. Uh, How's your driving record yeah. been? You know, you, know, you know what comes to mind, all due respect, is that I know that some of the folks got caught for whatever, we mm -hmm. not dot in the eyes, not too long, black folks. Yeah. One in particular was, was Ron Herndon's son, mm -hmm. I, guess, I guess. He's in prison, he, but that was for fraud. There. No, but my point is that he did make some loans. Yeah. No, no, he didn't just make loans. 
he was, he, I forgot how many counts. It was something like 50 counts no, but I the point I was of that wire fraud. Serving, no, but my point is he's now serving his time. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying that That's once different. he gets out, no, but he, once he gets out, if all of a sudden some of the, the deals that he's made, the, the people living in, all of a sudden, they can they come back after him again? And Yes. Oh, yeah, that's yes. not Deborah Jeopardy. Yes. He went to jail for something totally different yeah, than yeah. what they're talking about. So everything's going to be on right. the table. Everything's, everything's on, the on the table. Oh, my God. But, no, but, but this is what I'm, the reason why I bring this up, I want to get this across. The, I think the banks eventually. What about gonna, realtors? We're, we don't have to worry about that. But what I'm getting to. Well, hold it, hold it. Hold it. Take that back. Take that back. We have to worry about it if we, because in Oregon, we can do loans. We can do up to 10 loans. So if we do the loans, and, we, and that's why a realtor shouldn't do any loans. Realtor, don't do any don't loans. Any loans. But what, this business, is the reason why it's important for people to understand is, two minutes, is so. it's still very tight to get get a loan. I think banks in the long term are going to jump off that ledge and start letting you know doing loans and just deal with the issues the when they cross the, the bridge. Rate, they were just waiting on interest rates to go yeah, up. But, but Correct. The thing that gets me well, about no, they're going to be going down. We only got about two minutes. But the only thing that really gets me about this: the bank makes the loan. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go out, you bring the package up there. If he he's supposed to, he's supposed to vet that whole sit, that piece of paper. And when it, once he signed right. it, it should be his Correct. responsibility. But I'm supposed I have some certain due diligence guy. things that I'm supposed to do as yeah, well. Still, Correct. As banker, I'm bringing the paperwork I'm, to I'm him. I'm signing off on the whole deal. But, but see, Bob's getting onto a very important point. Mm -hmm. He has his jobs that he's supposed to do. Even if he paid. does it, based on the underwriter's guidelines, right. he could still be liable. Right. right. So he may is not. He just brings the information and presents it to the underwriter. He's not the final decision maker. So he doesn't have as, that much control over his future when it, in that situation. Because if the underwriter approves it, he's on the hook just like everybody else. But look, guys, I tell people Real go bad. ahead and, and do loans anyway. Go ahead and submit. Push it anyway. Jeez. The only way the system's going to get fixed, or the problem's going to be fixed, is to highlight it, and that's by activity. Wow. So just yeah. ignore it. Guys, this yeah. has been great. I mean, there's been a lot of information out there. And folks, viewers, you see where we're at. We see where we're at. Hey, sit down at the table, do a se simple session, pick up the paper. I mean, even though a lot of guys don't want, people want to buy them. But anyway, I think it's been really good. Thank go, you, guys. Go to your local go coffee right shop. <laughs> Sounds great. Okay. <laughs> Thanks very much, Bob. Hey, I enjoy it. Thanks, good. Uh, guys, you're going to be getting out. Doing your thing. Yep, I got to go do real estate. And Bob, uh, I'm going to watch football. Sounds great. And, yeah. then, and then I'm going to watch football. <laughs> Next week, we're going to have another very interesting program. And uh, thanks for being with us. As George Page always said, remember him? Yeah, back, back to, to what, what you, you believe, believe in. Sounds good. Guys, yeah, thanks. Have a good one, folks.